I suppose throughout life, each of us has experiences that will challenge the continuity of our lives. You know, we have accidents, we encounter people, you know, some people just enjoy living life on the edge. And nevertheless, I will keep spinning. So I don't know that I consider surviving in and of itself special. But the skills we learn, you know, the resilience that we display, the determination we have to continue in the face of whatever obstacles we encounter, those things can mark us differently, give us unique battle scars, you know, visible or invisible, and the healing from which, you know, that makes us fairly unique. It's pretty subjective stuff. You know, some people are suffering competitors. You like you can describe every painful episode you've been through in detail, and then they'll try to one-up you. You know, <laughs> that's not what this is. I'm going to share my story because I can, because it might help someone. But do yourself a favor. Don't compare yourself to me or to someone else. How this person responds or how that one fights. The honor is not limited to the fight. The honor is in the healing. I am late death. When I was 17, in my senior year of high school, I woke up one morning with what felt like watery ears. I don't know how else to describe it. It had loud ringing and my hearing was kind of warbly. And so, you know, I became pretty frantic and wondered what was happening or what went wrong. Was it something I did? Is it something I need to do? Um, so I went to the doctor, which neither me nor my parents could afford, really. <laughs> and they performed, you know, the standard irrigations, which always give me an infection afterward, and they did. Um, but they poked and prodded and sent me to all manner of specialists trying to figure everything out, and none of them really came to much conclusion. Eventually, I had an MRI, and the technician on the dock conferred and decided there must have been some sort of nerve damage, and it could have been autoimmune, possibly. But they really had no idea for sure, and they told us so. What they did tell me was that I was already developing my survival skills. That's what he called them. Watching for visual cues, reading people as they speak, constantly scanning the environment for things that most people hear as ambient noise and react to without thinking. Those are survival skills that one develops in the course of an active deaf life. People who are born deaf do not lip read as a rule. Being light deaf is different. We're in the middle. <laughs> We're kind of a bridge between the two cultures. English is my mother tongue. You can't just hire an interpreter, like ASL interpreter, or start moving your hands and expect everyone to be well suited to that form of communication. There are all kinds of deaf people. None of them are wrong, none of them are correct. We're just people handling life the best way we can. I've had people assume that, you know, we need hand holding. Oh, are you okay? Can you cross the street? You know, don't do that. <laughs> I'm not the one. I don't play that. I don't need your pity, and I don't ask for it. I appreciate understanding, cooperation, open-mindedness. Um, people ask me some pretty strange things. They make all kinds of twisted, irrational assumptions, and i rather they just ask. I am not responsible for how your mind works. It is the absolute last thing I can possibly control or be responsible for whatever turn someone else's mind decides to take. If you have a question, you need to ask. If it seems silly, it probably is, but I'd still rather you ask it. <laughs> My biggest fear is opportunities lost because someone was too presumptuous and snap judged. I get that a lot. I have to face my biggest fears on a daily basis. You know, we win some and we lose some. I could care less if I look stupid when I try my best. I'm pretty used to that. <laughs> I care about people denying me the opportunities that I fully deserve because of their prejudice. I don't, I'm not responsible for that. I care about that a great deal, and I don't have time or inclination for it. If you want to assume the worst things about me, my behavior, or my non-response, the odds are you don't deserve to know me. But the fact of the matter is, every interaction we have with another human being teaches us something. You know, it reflects on us, it reminds us, it engages us, it inspires us, it annoys us, it enrages, enriches all of it, all of the stuff. We exchange energy with so many people in a day's time. So it's up to us to decide how much those interactions will impact us. I am brilliant. I am confident. I am highly skilled at what I do. The last thing I need is for you to hold my hand. I simply want understanding and cooperation. Walk with me.